among the chemical poisoning first one is the uh, urea poisoning urea poisoning is common in ruminants again urea poisoning doesn't occur in other animals uh, simple stomach animal it is a problem in ruminants because in ruminants only this urea is hydrolyzed and it is converted to ammonia sources accidental ingestion of urea fertilizers which are being commonly used in the agriculture and feeding of a large quantity of urea as a protein supplement we are not feeding in excess quantity but nowadays some farm giving urea molasses treatment to the poor quality roughage are being feeding those type of uh, treated straws uh, if uh, uh, more amount of urea is being given in that case the urea poisoning may develop otherwise the accidental ingestion of urea fertilizer is the major cause of urea it is the major cause of uh, urea poisoning in Uh, ruminants in our country urea if it is given at the rate of 1 gram per kg body weight means if you give only 30 to 40 gram of urea to a goat if a goat consumes 30 to 40 gram of urea she will die of urea urea poisoning toxicity of urea is due to formation of ammonia so urea as such is not toxic it is least toxic but urea is converted to ammonia by the ruminal microflora and this ammonia if it is formed in a small quantity then it is trapped by the ruminal microbes and converted to protein. we are using urea uh, as a very good entian source of protein for many, uh, treatment of uh, you, um, uh, you can say the poor quality roughages to in order to improve the protein status so this is on one side but when it is given in a small quantity then certainly urea is utilized by the ruminal microbes for protein synthesis but if urea is given in a more quantity then whatever ammonia is formed that will be big in quantity large in quantity and that cannot be utilized by the ruminal available ruminal microbes in the remain and uh, that's why that ammonia is being absorbed through the uh, ruminin into the blood stream and that will go to the liver and then to the then to the brain and uh, it will cause ammonia intoxication and uh, you can see the neurological type problems like that is encephalopathy it will develop it will cause encephalopathy and uh, that will lead to a death of animal so what are the signs observed in uh, uh, urea poisoning the first sign is usually a bloat immediately after consumption the bloat will develop colic will develop salivation is a very common so bloat colic and salivation these are the initial signs later on there is incoordination muscle tremors dyspnea struggling actually while you are struggling is because of colic as well as nervous signs bellowing animals they cry and ammoniacal smell to the breath that is a characteristic you are poisoning you will say the cardinal sign so history of accidental ingestion of urea and ammoniacal smell to the breath and death usually occurs within 3 to 4 hours so onset is sudden and death is also rapid so usually we don't get so we we'll have to give major thrust on prevention of urea poisoning and also first aid i will see and we we'll have to educate the educate the our farmers go to owners sheep owners uh, what to do if a, a particular animal uh, consumes uh, urea so in the beginning we we'll have to give the weak acids like vinegar or 5% acetic acid vinegar is available so acetic acid 5% 5 ml in 100 ml of uh, you can say uh, water it has to be dissolved and it is to be given uh, at the rate of 0.5 to 1 liter to the sheep and goat it can be given simultaneously we have to give the cold water so cold water uh, is very important so we we'll have to educate the farmers about these two things so uh, immediately after consumption we should ask the farmer to give 2 to 3 liter of the cold water and maybe a 5% uh, vinegar uh, 0.5 to 1 liter to the um, to the goat so that will slow down the hydrolysis of urea so it will help in changing the ph towards the acidic side so in acidic uh, acidic ph the urea uh, converge conversion of urea to ammonia will not occur you can stop even if cold water is provided that will stop the process of hydrolysis that will stop the process of hydrolysis of urea so simple thing give cold water give acidic or you can say the weak acids and uh, you can prevent so you can you can uh, prevent the onset of poison this is the best way i will say first aid we should give major trust on the first aid evacuation of the ruminant country not easy not easy in case of the ruminants actually evacuation um, then intravenous fluids continuously we have to give the fluids Uh, so and anticonvulsants 
like uh, maybe a diazepam or pentobarbital, calcium magnesium source can be given by intravenous food. But I've seen in goats, usually the success rate is poor once the, uh, there is onset of science. So I give thrust on the education of the farm. Then the next poisoning is the chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning. Uh, the BSC, L-Rene, Diagrene, N-Rene, Lindane, these are the organochlorine or chlorinated hydrocarbons. They are being used as a pesticides in agriculture. And uh, accidentally, animals may consume while grazing, uh, browsing, and uh, they may get poisoned with organochlorine substances. So, uh, see these things. Drinking of water from pesticide sprayed crop fields. So, uh, if you have sprayed the pesticide on the crops and immediately if there is a rainfall and uh, the along with the rains that pesticides may be drained and if that water is being uh, consumed or ingested. Licking or ingestion of pesticide emptied containers. Then ingestion of pesticides, uh, ingestion of pesticide treated seeds, contamination of forage and water with aerial spray, improper sprays on body and shed as a ectoparasiticide, sometimes the, the uh, you see, for a control of ticks and lice, again, the these type of uh, uh, pesticides, they are being sprayed by some of the farmers. Accidental ingestion, uh, here the old species are uh, susceptible. The typical signs, they include in the initial signs, the salivation. So that is a salivation, grinding of uh, teeth, uh, uh, hyperthermia, maybe because of convulsions, the hyperthermia uh, may develop. Uh, hyperthermia may develop. There is a dyspnea. There is a difficulty in breathing. Muscle tremors, incoordination, nervous signs they occur, and usually those are chronic type of convulsions and uh, intermittent type of convulsions. They occur in episodes. If the poisoning is very severe, then the convulsions will be continuous one. But in general, the poisoning in poisoning, particularly chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning, so uh, the convulsions they develop in episodes. They may develop at an interval of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours like that, depending upon the severity. And uh, they may remain for maybe one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes like that. In a very severe case of poisoning, there are continuous convulsions. Continuous convergence. So, no, they may not occur in episodes. And uh, uh, this is accompanied by uh, salivation. This is accompanied by salivation. There is no specific antidote for chlorinated hydrocarbon poison. Remove the animal from the source. If it is on the body, well, give bath uh, with the animal with the plenty of water, dermal exposure. If it is oral, give saline purgatives. Don't give laxatives. Don't give IV purgatives. Give saline purgatives like Maxil. Give activated charcoal, anticonvulsions, digipam of phenobarbital. Again, a charcoal availability is the problem. Intensive fluid therapy like dextrose, it has to be given at a frequent intervals. I have the opinion that if it is a chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning, I generally give fluid therapy four times a day, every six hour in the beginning or during first 24 hours when the, the poisoning is very, condition is very critical, poisoning is severe, you can give it even at an interval of three to four hours in the beginning. Later on, you can switch over to six hourly and 12 hourly like that. So calcium is a universal antidote that can be very well used. Atropine sulfate can be used here. It is not an antidote, but it can be used to improve the respiration, to reduce the bronchial secretions and the salivation. It will give comfort to the animal. So here atropine sulfate is to be used in a very small quantity. Maybe a three ml of atropine sulfate, here it is sufficient. So. This is the line of treatment to be adopted. Again, anticonvulsions like diazepam, they have to be given maybe at a six hour interval. So diazepam needs to be given at four to six inter hour interval. Fluid therapy, maybe at six hour interval like that. These two treatments, two drugs are very important. Fluid and anticonvulsions. Worldly, uh, you can see the purgatives. Then third is the organophosphate poisoning. The organophosphate poisoning is common in ruminants. Accidental ingestion or spraying uh, can lead to uh, the, the way uh, you see the modes uh, of poisoning. They are almost similar to that of uh, chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning, contaminated drinking water, animal premises. So here, malathion, parathion, forate, that is not very commonly used nowadays because chlorinated hydrocarbons, uh, they are not being recommended most of the time. So these uh, thymate-like preparations, they are very commonly used containing the forate. The chlor uh, chlorpyrifos, 
and uh, diginon and dichloros and the so the organophosphates they are here. The clinical signs they include two types of the clinical signs: muscarinic signs, the profuse salivation, lacrimation, diarrhea, meiosis, and frequent urination. So these are the typical signs that is a constriction of the pupil and frequent uh, urination. So signs are muscarinic signs, whereas the nicotinic signs they include the difficulty in breathing and some mild nervous signs. But See, when we compare organophosphate poisoning with the chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning, so in case of organophosphate poisoning, the nervous signs are less marked. The so nervous signs are less marked. The secretory signs are more marked. Whereas in chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning, nervous signs are more marked. They are dominating. They are dominating. So how to treat cases of organophosphate poisoning? Here, the early treatment is required. A drop in sulfate can be very well. This is the cheapest, you can say, treatment. It's a very good uh, antidote, which controls the muscarinic symptoms at a recommended dose of 0.25 mg per kg. In goat and sheep, the dose is very high. I have used this. I, I have seen that 0.25 mg doesn't give result. 1 mg per kg means for each kg body weight of a goat, you know to give nearly 2 ml of atropine sulfate because each ml of atropine sulfate contains 0.6 mg. So you know to give nearly, well, you can say 1.75 ml per kg of the body. That is what required. But in the beginning, you don't give that much. Give, stuff. give it at the base rate of 0.5. If required, you can increase the dose. Repeat at 3 to 6 hour interval. Even after 2 hours, you can repeat it. If the salivation starts and if the signs appear, reappear, in that case, yeah, you can give at a after two hours also. Administer cholinesterase reactivators, they are costlier, but they can be used. If the combination of atropine and cholinesterase reactivator is used, that's a, that will give a wonderful result uh, and uh, definitely have an excellent survival rate. Two palm chloride can be used at the rate of 20 mg per kg body weight as a 10% solution intramuscularly or intravenously. You can give it through drink also. So atropine and cholinesterase. But I have treated many cases with just atropine. Hello, atropine. The removal of residual toxin uh, by giving the saline purgatives. But you see, organophosphate, they are very rapidly absorbed. If uh, as a first aid, immediately after ingestion, one can give saline purgatives. They are very beneficial. But uh, if you are giving it after two, three hours, then they are of somewhat lethal value. In chlorinated hydrocarbon, yes. So absorption is slow, but in organophosphate, absorption is faster. Washing the animal with plenty of water, administration of saline purgatives, and administration of activated charcoal. Keeping the animal quiet and comfortable, sedatives to control the convulsions. Here, sedatives are usually not required. In chlorinated hydrocarbon poisoning, you have to give sedatives. Here, sedatives, you can manage the cases even without sedatives. Or even if you require, you, you require one or two doses, not more than that. Intensive fluid therapy is beneficial. Then the rodenticide poisoning, sometimes accidental consumption of the rodenticides uh, may lead to a rodenticide poisoning or it may be a, can be used as a molasses poison. And these are the clinical signs. Usually, there is the ingestion can block a vitamin K-dependent clotting factor. And uh, the, the bleeding will develop after four. You see, in the beginning, the signs will not develop. After ingestion of the rodenticide, usually the signs develop after four or five days. And... Uh, Generally, there is a bleeding, bleeding through nose, bleeding through feces, and bleeding through urine. So there may be hematuria, epistaxis, or uh, you can say the hematochegia. Uh, Colic will appear, and uh, there may be a difficulty in breathing. Administer activated charcoal and cathartic as soon as possible. Immediately, it should be given. And initiate vitamin K1 therapy at the dose rate of point, uh, uh, 2.5 to 5 mg per kg intervention. So vitamin K injections are available. Each ML contains 10 mg. That can be given. And uh, fresh or frozen plasma can be given at the rate or a whole blood to replace the clotting factors. This is the additional treatment. Otherwise, vitamin K, uh, oral purgatives and parenteral fluid therapy helps in the recovery.